Hold on. You're telling me that I can fly the Millennium Falcon, walk the same streets Walt Disney walked, and eat my fill of beignets all in the same park? Yeah, there's a reason why Disneyland continues to be so popular among locals and tourists alike. And if you want to succeed inside this park next year, you're going to need a game plan. Good thing you got the DFB team here to lend a helping hand. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. So interactive tree houses and ghostly gardens and revived nighttime spectaculars, Disneyland's got them all and a lot more in store for next year. But the goal of today's video isn't simply to highlight all the best new and returning stuff that you need to know about before going to this park, though that's gonna be a good chunk of it. We're also gonna make sure you know how to make this 2024 vacation the best one yet with tips and recommendations and cautionary tales. Now, if you're looking for a springboard Disneyland itinerary to use for trip planning inspo, we've got one of those for you too. Just scan the QR code you see on the screen or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disneyland plans. We're gonna send you a digital PDF illustrating how to pull off three perfect days inside the Disneyland bubble completely free. All right, let's get going on this video. What to expect? So welcome to Disneyland, AKA the happiest place on earth. How about we take a lap around this park together real quick just to get a good idea of where everything is. When you first step through the park gates, you'll immediately take a step back in time to Main Street, USA, turn of the century shopping strip inspired by Walt Disney's home back in Marceline, Missouri. Main Street, USA leads you back toward the Disneyland hub where you're gonna find the iconic Sleeping Beauty castle. Don't forget, it's not just what's on the outside of the castle that makes it so awesome. You're gonna wanna take a tour through the inside at some point of the day too for an interactive walkthrough experience detailing the full story of Sleeping Beauty from the finger prick on the spinning wheel to the epic Maleficent battle to the much awaited happily ever after. Sorry if there were any spoilers there for anybody. Now, from the hub, you'll have a choice to make. Which land do you want to start in first? On the left-hand side, you can choose to enter either Adventureland or Frontierland. Adventureland is where the wanderlust folk are going to want to hang out since the attractions here are all very quest and journey and adventure heavy. This is where you're going to find Indiana Jones Adventure and the Jungle Cruise Boat, so brace yourself for sarcasm and silliness and snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Meanwhile, Frontierland is going to take you through the wild, wild west and on into the wildest ride in the wilderness, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Beyond Adventureland and Frontierland, you're going to find three other lands to branch out into. First, there's New Orleans Square, where you can knock out two major dark rides, Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Then there's Critter Country, which is experiencing some major renovation right now. I'll talk more about that in just a second, but it's still a good place to hit up two easygoing attractions, the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh and Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes, my favorite that nobody will ever ride with me. And then there's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is gonna transport you to the planet of Batuu, where you can become part of the Millennium Falcon crew on Smuggler's Run or join the rebellion on Rise of the Resistance. If you go straight on through Sleeping Beauty Castle, you're gonna end up at many guests' favorite land of the whole park, including Walt Disney's, and that's Fantasyland, the original Fantasyland OG. It is chock full of family-friendly rides for everybody, including Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Snow White's Enchanted Wish, Peter Pan's Flight, Storybook Land Canals, It's a Small World, and many other fantastical attractions that'll transport you into that world of wonder and maybe a few nightmarish scenes too, because Mr. Toad, Matterhorn, Bob Sleds, and Pinocchio all kind of scary, or at least painful, and at the very least, weird. And beyond Fantasyland, you'll come across the reimagined Toontown. This park goes on forever. I'm gonna stop right there for now because I wanna talk more about Toontown in the next point since there's a lot happening there lately. But let's say you take a right at the hub instead, then you're gonna enter into the future, sort of. Tomorrowland is supposed to be a realm that gives us a good look into what the future could become, but really it's just kind of galactic and space driven, which is still a good time. The biggest attraction in this area is the ever popular space Mountain, but you're also going to be able to experience rides like Star Tours, Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters, Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, not really spacey, Autopia, also not spacey, and Astro Orbiter, back to space. 
So, all right, now that we had a good lay of the land, let's scout out all the bright, shiny new stuff you're gonna find during your Disneyland visit. First of all, we gotta talk about Toontown since I teased y'all about it in the previous point. Mickey's Toontown was entirely transformed at the beginning of 2023 with revamped interactive stuff and new attractions. And one of the new spaces that debuted in the transformed Toontown is called Centennial Park, which features a large fountain with water tables set at the base to invite and allow guests to play with the water. Nearby is the Dreaming Tree, a real tree. It's a tribute to Walt Disney's beloved Cottonwood Tree in Marceline, Missouri, where he used to sit and daydream as a kid. The former Gadget Go Coaster has been renamed and spruced up into Chippendale's Gadget Coaster with the same fun size track, but a new paint job and character props. Then you got the reimagined character houses and immersive play areas you can venture through, like Mickey and Minnie's houses, Goofy's How To Play Yard, and Donald's Duck Pond. And if you start to feel a little bit peckish after all that playing, you can swing by Cafe Daisy for a quick bite to eat. But the biggest addition to the Toontown area is, of course, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This is a 2.5D dark ride where you become a tune yourself to take a relaxing train ride around the park with Goofy as your train conductor. So what could possibly go wrong? Now, the biggest difference between Runaway Railway and Disneyland and Hollywood Studios over in Orlando is the queue experience. While Studios' version takes place in a rough of the Grauman's Chinese Theater, Disneyland's version is in the El Capitoon Theater. And inside the El Capitoon Theater, there's a special exhibit created by the Toontown Hysterical Society, showcasing life in the Toon world before you take off on your runaway railway adventure. I had to say that like six times in order to get it right. Be on the lookout for items and Easter eggs from animation classics like Steamboat Willie and Plain Crazy, Mickey's Christmas Carol, and more throughout the exhibit, that, uh, that line, cue line that you're going to go through to get on the ride. Now, while we're still waiting for more news about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which I'll talk about more next, you're more than welcome to explore Tiana's two other new areas already open inside New Orleans Square. The first is Eudora's Chic Boutique, named after Princess Tiana's mama. Inside the store, the decor and merchandise are inspired by New Orleans and Princess and the Frog. You can also pick up some of Tiana's own spices and sauces while you're here, too. Then there's Tiana's Palace, also in New Orleans Square, where you can enjoy comforting southern dishes inspired by Cajun and Creole cuisine. There's a house gumbo, a po' boy, and muffaletta sandwich, and golf shrimp and grits. Now, this is the reimagined quick service replacing French market restaurant, but it's not a character dining experience. So while Tiana might be the owner, you're not going to see her roam the dining room areas. That said, what you are going to find here are those classic Disneyland mint juleps and beignets, because even though the French market is now transformed, the attached mint julep bar is still alive and kicking next to this updated eatery. The latest update that's happened happened inside Disneyland, however, is actually over in Adventureland at the former Tarzan's Treehouse. So Tarzan's closed in September 2021 for a complete retheming into the Adventureland Treehouse. The walkthrough attraction now pays tribute to the original treehouse Walt Disney and his Imagineers built in 1962 for the movie Swiss Family Robinson and made its grand debut on November 10th, 2023. The Adventureland Treehouse shows new environments along the shores of the Jungle River. Here you can enter by the giant water wheel and go up a wooden rope stairway into the massive tree. Inside the house, you're going to discover rooms that tell a new story. The mother has a music den, the son a nature room, and the daughter an astronomer's loft. All of these things are made with found objects, natural resources, and pure ingenuity. You're also going to find a bird named Jane, so keep a lookout for her. Now, while lots of new stuff can be found inside Disneyland Park currently, there is still some more stuff to come. In spring 2024, new scenes are going to be added to the Star Tours attraction for not just Disneyland, but Disney World and Disneyland Paris, too. Now, we're not sure specifically how many new scenes and characters we're going to find once these additions have been made, but we do know one of those characters is for sure going to be Ahsoka Tano, so that's pretty epic already. But that's not the only classic Disneyland ride that's getting updated. The grounds of the Haunted Mansion in Disneyland will be expanded expanding in 2024 too. This is very exciting. According to Disney, these additions will build on the story and lore of the Haunted Mansion. So these expansions are gonna include a bigger outdoor queue with ghoulish gardens and greenhouses inspired by Master Gracie, Madame Leota, and the One-Eyed Cat. And on top of the queue expansion, Haunted Mansion will also be getting its own gift shop finally, themed after Madame Leota, which sounds a whole lot like Memento Mori over in Magic Kingdom, which we're not mad about. Construction will start up in January, 2024, 
But there's no exact timeline yet about when these new areas are gonna be up and ready for guests. We'll be sure to update you once we find out. The biggest ride reimagining for the park next year though, that's gonna be Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It's slated to open in both Disneyland Park and Disney World's Magic Kingdom around late 2024. Splash Mountain closed permanently on May 31st to be rethemed into an attraction inspired by this Disney animated film, Princess and the Frog. And during the retheme log flume ride, you're gonna join Princess Tiana and everyone's favorite saxophone playing Gator Lewis on a musical adventure with music directly from the film in a Mardi Gras inspired setting. And last but certainly not least, we're about to say hello again to an old nighttime spectacular that's had a really rough go in 2023. While you can still catch a version of this show at Hollywood Studios in Orlando, an unexpected fire destroyed the Maleficent Dragon animatronic for Disneyland's Fantasmic show, causing it to close indefinitely while Imagineers revamped the design. But now we know that the show will be returning on May 24th, 2024, so mark your calendars. When the show comes back, there's going to be some major changes made to it to make sure what happened before it doesn't happen again because Maleficent has had some serious problems on both coasts, you know, catching fire and stuff. So hopefully we're going to get this together. But it's still nice to know we're going to have it back in some sort of capacity so that Mickey Mouse can be the defender of his dreams and ours once more. But maybe it's not just the new stuff you're interested in. Maybe you really want to dive deep into the history of this park as a true fan of all things Disney. Turns out you can do that too during one of Disneyland's backstage tours. The most classic of the backstage tours that tends to happen year round is Walt's Main Street Story Tour, where you can discover hidden details and exclusive facts and mind boggling trivia, all centered around that classic Main Street USA area and Walt Disney's home back in Marceline. But the absolute coolest part about this 90 minute tour is getting the chance to step foot into the very apartment Walt used to stay in right above the Disneyland fire station, where you'll be able to enjoy light refreshments out on his patio. This tour does cost extra on top of your Disneyland park tickets, but you can learn more about the cost and reservation availability via the Disneyland app and or on the Disneyland website. For a different type of VIP treatment, this park also hosts Disneyland After Dark events throughout the year too. These seasonal events take place after the park closes for everyone else, giving you a chance to experience four hours of very limited crowds and exclusive offerings and much shorter attraction queues. And unlike the backstage tours, you don't have to purchase a regular theme park ticket too if you don't want to. You can just show up and do all the nighttime stuff instead with just the nighttime ticket. In fact, even though these parties start up after the park closes, you'll still be able to enter Disneyland three hours early for a pre-party park mix-in, say that three times fast, which is included with with each ticket. Now, don't forget about this. Among all the vacation excitement, some important details might fall through the cracks and derail your Disneyland day, but we are not gonna let that happen, not on our watch. So here are the things you need to remember during your Disneyland visit before it's too late. Tip number one, nighttime spectaculars don't happen nightly. So Disneyland fireworks don't happen nearly as often as they do in Magic Kingdom. On weekdays during slower seasons, like mid-January and February, for instance, the Sleeping Beauty Castle fireworks tend to hibernate for a bit. Now that doesn't mean you'll have no nighttime show to anticipate. The castle projections usually still happen, just no big fireworks to go along with them. But when the crowds start picking up again, the fireworks tend to pick up and be a more regular occurrence too. If seeing those Disneyland fireworks is gonna be a make or break situation for your trip, then check Disneyland's hours and events calendar on their website to get a better idea of what days the fireworks are going to be offered for your visit. Mind you, the calendar only tends to show hours and showtimes up to a month or two in advance, so if you don't see them right away, don't panic. They'll probably just not be posted quite yet, but they will be. Give it time. Tip number two, you still have to make park pass reservations. While Disney World will be doing away with their park pass reservations mostly starting January 9th, 2024, Disneyland is still going to require you to make them for now so don't forget to make your Park Pass reservations after you purchase your tickets so you can save your spot in the park. To make sure Park Pass reservations are still available for the days you're wanting to visit so that you don't purchase tickets and then find out all those reservations have already been taken, just head to the Disneyland website and check out their theme park reservation availability calendar to help take that weight off your shoulders. Tip number three, there's a monorail station in downtown Disney. It's a straight shot to the Disneyland park once you've entered the downtown Disney district, but if you want to take a monorail ride into the park instead of hoofing it over there, which might take you about 10 to 15 minutes, then you'll need to board the monorail at the Downtown Disney District Station, which you'll find toward the front right across from the Lego store. Just make sure you got a valid theme park ticket and park pass reservation before you board, since this monorail ride will take you straight into the park and you won't be able to get on unless you've got a ticket. 
Tip number four, early entrance is about to change. Per the release of this video, both Anaheim Parks, Disneyland and Disney California Adventure open 30 minutes early each day for Disneyland Resort hotel guests only. However, starting on January 20th, 2024, the early entry benefit is going to be updated. Instead of both parks offering early entry every day, Disneyland and California Adventure will take turns with this benefit. So you'll still get the extra 30 minutes of park time, but only at whichever park has early entry that day. So again, be sure to check the park hours and events calendar online to make sure you don't miss out on using that hotel benefit if you've got it. Now, what about Genie Plus? Do you need it? Well, whether you're visiting the Disney parks on the West Coast or the East, the same question can still be asked. Do you or do you not need to purchase Disney Genie Plus to help you bypass those queue lines throughout the day? When it comes to Disneyland, the answer is maybe. I know, helpful, right? But I do tend to lean more heavily in the no direction. First of all, the starting price for Disney Genie Plus in Disneyland just increased again not too terribly long ago. So now, instead of the base price being $25, five bucks, it's jumped to 30, which means the absolute lowest you'll spend on Disney Genie Plus during your visit is $30 per person per day, with the possibility of it costing even more when the demand spikes. And secondly, there are quite a few rides in Disneyland that don't actually even have Lightning Lane capability. Here's a full list of what rides do have Lightning Lanes available on Genie Plus for Disneyland versus which ones don't. Pretty drastic, right? Note that Rise of the Resistance does have a Lightning Lane, but you're going to have to pay an individual price to access it, which typically ranges is between $20 to $25 per person per ride through, and that's going to be outside of the $30 plus you're going to pay for Genie Plus. Now, I'm not saying Genie Plus is a total waste here because it's still going to be able to help you bypass those big queue lines, especially around those busier travel seasons. Plus, that price will automatically include all your PhotoPass pictures that you take throughout the day, which might be worth the investment alone. But you're definitely going to want to weigh the pros and cons before making any final Genie Plus decisions. If you do decide that you want to add Genie Plus onto your day, because it really can be a nifty way to bypass ride lines and collect all your PhotoPass pictures too, then there are two ways you can purchase it. And both ways are very different from how Genie Plus purchases work at Disney World. Option number one, you can purchase Genie Plus as an add-on beforehand. This is going to help guarantee that you'll only have to pay $30 per person per day for this service instead of worrying about fluctuating prices. The big downside of purchasing Genie Plus in advance is that you're going to have to pay for it for every single park day. So if you were planning on getting three days worth of Disneyland and DCA tickets, you'll have to purchase Genie Plus for all three days if you do it in advance. Option number two, you can purchase Genie Plus through the Disneyland app after entering the park on the day of your visit. This is going to be the best route for you if you only want to use Genie Plus on certain park days, but not for your entire trip. But you're also going to be subjected to those fluctuating prices. To purchase Genie Plus after you've entered the park, tap on the Get Disney Genie Plus Services link and go to the My Day section to get started. One of my favorite things about Disneyland is how incredibly impressive the food can be here. From golden fried chicken to hefty Mexican cuisine to even pastries shaped like iconic Disneyland rides. This place has got the goods. So let's talk about a few of the DFB team's favorite food-based stomping grounds inside the park. For sit-down meals, we're going to head to Blue Bayou, tucked in a spirited corner of Disneyland's New Orleans Square. This is where Blue Bayou is hidden. Now, it is very hidden. You could just walk right by and not even notice it. Blue Bayou is a great day night setting. You got soft twinkling lights, painted paper lanterns, candlelit tables, moss laden trees, and a clear view of the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction floating on by, which what's not romantic about that, right? But it's not just the lovebirds who are going to love this place. Families who enjoy Creole and Southern fare like Monte Cristo sandwiches and jambalaya, they're going to enjoy the menu options here too. Now, I will say it can be a total vibe killer when you're seated at the tables right next to the kitchen because the fluorescent light is right in your face and there's like hustle and bustle going on. So try to request a table as close to the water as you can. Riverbell Terrace, this is charming. Remember, this used to be a counter service restaurant. Over here, you get to enjoy the view of Rivers of America from that outdoor seating or nestle into the airy garden inspired dining room if you decide to sit inside. Some may say it's dated. Some may say it's lovely. Who knows? But you also get to chow down on lots of Southern fare for brunch and dinner. The barbecue brisket, Southern breakfast skillet, the seasonal monkey bread, the fried chicken sandwich, Southern fried game hen. If they've got the brisket mac and cheese, get that for sure. Carnation Cafe is one of my favorites. This is an old fashioned piece of Americana that really does harken back to a simpler time, Walt Disney's time, and offers modern versions of cafe classic dishes. 
breakfast menu here has got those Mickey waffles and country fried steak and eggs, but you can also order comfort foods beyond breakfast like meatloaf, Walt's chili in honor of Walt Disney's favorite dish, and even a sweet ice cream treat for dessert. And Cafe Orleans. Get a big taste of the Crescent City at this casual, stately Cafe Orleans restaurant. Decorated with vintage style brass light fixtures, stained glass panels, details reminiscent of the Big Easy, lots of wood in here. You can enjoy a filling meal whether you choose to dine inside or out on the umbrella covered patio. Cafe Orleans is a great alternative to Blue Bayou, especially during the busiest seasons, like around the holidays, when Blue Bayou reservations may be hard to come by. Cafe Orleans also has one of my favorite dishes in all of Disneyland Resort. They've got that Monte Cristo with those palm frites with that yummy remoulade, so definitely get that when you're there. And again, it's the same Monte Cristo you're going to get in Blue Bayou, but it's going to be cheaper here. Speaking of reservations, don't forget to make advanced dining reservations for Disneyland's table services before you take off. The ADR window opens 60 days before your visit, and the earlier you can get online or on the app to book those reservations, the better your chances of getting a table will be. I always find it's harder to get reservations in Disneyland than it is in Disney World because there's just fewer restaurants. Now, how about for those quick eats? We're going to start with Plaza Inn. This is probably my favorite quick service restaurant in all of Disneyland Resort. I actually prefer it over most of the table service restaurants here. During lunch and dinner hours, Plaza Inn is a cafeteria style eatery with a rich Victorian atmosphere, plenty of outdoor seating, and the pot roast and pasta are good here. But if you can only choose one item on the menu, always get the fried chicken. Seriously, this stuff is so incredible that I feel like most of my problems in life could probably be solved by Plaza Inn fried chicken. It is so so good. Now, meanwhile, breakfast here is a character meal sit-down restaurant, so it features all you care to enjoy spreads with Minnie and friends. Another spot we love is Rancho del Zocalo. This is in the heart of Frontierland. It's a quick service where authentic Mexican classics impress us over and over. Fresh and flavorful food, generous portions, beautiful setting with outdoor seating. There are lots of days when I much prefer eating here over any Disneyland table service as well. Moving on to uh, Alien Pizza Planet. Believe it or not, yes, we are going to talk about this. The little green men from Toy Story are offering up their pizzas by the slice for you to grab something quick and satisfying and affordable before hopping onto Space Mountain. We like the pizza here, but we're a bigger fan of the pasta dishes like the chicken or shrimp fusilli. That's one of my favorites in the park. Bengal Barbecue. This is a quick and fulfilling bite when your stomach is growling like a jungle tiger and you just have a second. This is an adventure land. It's a counter service spot that specializes in a variety of fresh skewer selections like banyan beef skewer, the pork belly skewer, bacon wrapped asparagus safari skewer. Lots of good fresh stuff here that you can grab on the go. And of course, let's talk about Tiana's Palace. This just opened over in New Orleans Square, and if it's getting a pretty lengthy line, then go ahead and mobile order your meal via the Disneyland app so you can skip over that physical queue entirely. This is gonna be good for pretty much any of these counter service restaurants as well. Definitely use mobile order. Now, what about snacks? We're gonna start at Jolly Holiday. You could find this Mary Poppins themed bakery right off of Main Street USA, but what are you gonna find? Lots and lots of unique pastries, specialty coffees, tea for the early mornings, You've got the Raspberry Rose Macaron, which is Bria's favorite. And of course, you've got the Matterhorn Macaroon, which is my all-time favorite. Then a little later on in the day, the menu expands to include the fresh salad, specialty sandwiches, soups, and quiche. This spot always has seasonal stuff too, so definitely pay attention to what they've got on those placards. Next is Troubadour Tavern. This is located near It's a Small World, and it features Berber Spice popcorn, stuffed baked potatoes that are just over the top, several other unique specialty snacks that you're not going to find anywhere else in inside the park. This also rotates through a lot of specialty seasonal items too, so you never know what you're gonna find here. Note though, not a lot of seating, but it's not usually too busy up there. Tropical Hideaway is located just off the shores between the Jungle Cruise and Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. Here you're gonna enjoy an array of sweet and savory treats like Dole Whips and Bao Buns while also listening to Rosita the Tiki Room Bird crack one cheesy joke after another. I'm sure she makes the Jungle Cruise skippers proud. Moving on to the Little Red Wagon, this is the place to get a famous Disneyland hand-dipped corn dog. Not the only place to get it, you can also get it over Stage Door Cafe, but it's one of my favorite places to get it. You can find this little guy right off of Main Street USA, and each order is going to come with your choice of chips or apple slices. 
Oh, and for those of you who are wondering why I'm not mentioning Corndog Castle over in DCA, well, we've got another video dedicated just to DCA. But for those of you who are only watching this one, you can also get that famous Disneyland Corndog over at Corndog Castle. Ronto Roasters over in Vat 2. Yes, you got to go galactic for this one. Specializes in the Ronto Wrap. This is a handheld snack featuring spiced grilled sausage and roasted pork, kind of like an intergalactic hot dog. Well, the main attraction here is the sausage-based Ronto Wrap. Ronto Roasters also has a satisfying plant-based alternative called the Ronto Less Garden Wrap, made with plant-based sausage, spicy kimchi slaw, sweet pickled cucumber, a plant-based gojujang spread, all wrapped up in a pita. And if you come here in the morning, you can pick up the Ronto Morning Wrap, which is a lot like the regular Ronto Wrap, but with the addition of scrambled eggs and shredded cheese. All right, all full up, excellent. Now it's time to see some shows. You can't go through an entire day in Disneyland without seeing at least one or several iconic shows and characters, right? So let's track them down, starting with the Magic Happens Parade. This parade is a daily celebration of magic, hence the name, featuring fan favorite Disney characters from films like Coco and Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, Moana, and more. Be sure to check the Disneyland app for daily parade times because they can switch up on occasion. But I will tell you right now, this is probably my favorite Disney parade I have ever seen. As far as live performances go, Disneyland's got lots for you to choose from. For example, you can check out the Dapper Dan's Barbershop Quartet on Main Street USA. The Disneyland Band makes its rounds along Main Street and Tomorrowland too. Storytelling at the Royal Theater in Fantasyland, which depending on the showtime, you'll either get to experience a retelling of Tangled or Beauty and the Beast. The Golden Horseshoe Piano Player, who makes his appearance semi-regularly over at the Golden Horseshoe Quick Service Restaurant. By the way, that place also has some really good seasonal snacks and desserts as well and several other musical and streetmosphere performers you're going to be able to track down on the Disneyland app during your visit. Now, of course, we can't leave out the fireworks shows. Mickey's Magical Mix is what you'll normally see happening over at Sleeping Beauty Castle on certain nights. During the show, DJ Mickey will spin some familiar Disney tunes accompanied by kaleidoscopic projections that'll transform all of Main Street USA with colorful lights and lasers and characters. That being said, spectaculars change with the season, so check that Disneyland app. I know I sound like a broken record to figure out when these limited time productions are going to be taking place. Some of these seasonal showings could include Halloween screams in the fall, believe in holiday magic around Christmas, and specialty shows for New Year's Eve and 4th of July. But what happens if you don't want to just see your favorite characters? You want to meet them too. Well, Disney friends can show up anywhere around Disneyland. That's a big change between Disneyland and Disney World is Disneyland characters do tend to wander a little bit more than they do in Disney World. There are a few locations dedicated solely to character meet and greets. Here's a full list of all the different meet and greet locations you can swing by currently. I know it's a lot of names, so go ahead and pause the video if you need some extra time to take a closer look. Keep in mind that most characters in Toontown will be free roaming, while all the characters in Galaxy's Edge will be free roaming. So you'll have to keep your eyes peeled for them as they're wandering around their designated land. Now, there's just something extra special about a visit to Disneyland, right? Perhaps it's Walt Disney's direct influence or the local culture, or maybe it's all the top tier snacks definitely all the top tier snacks. But one thing I can tell you for certain is that we are excited to see what 2024 has in store for the Anaheim parks. So be sure to keep tuning back in and we'll continue to give you the latest news about Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, Downtown Disney, and the Disneyland Resorts as a whole. And also be sure to download our three perfect days in Disneyland guide by heading to disneyfoodblog.com slash Disneyland plans. Did I mention this is totally free? Because it is. <laughs> thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.